Hello. What we're going to look at now is what geologists, earth scientists call the rock cycle. It's a way of simplifying the various processes that take place that effectively form the different types of rock and sediment that are present in the lithosphere. So let's go to the document camera. Bear with me a moment here. We're going to go here. And let's take a look. So we're looking at the rock cycle. So we're going to start by thinking about molten rock. Don't worry about the details at this point. Hang on, I need to get this all beautifully in focus. Come on, I can do better than this. All right, so we have molten material and it's down below the land surface somewhere, molten rock. Now, the way we move to the next um, set of materials is that molten material will need to cool and crystallize. So we have our processes here, it cools and it crystallizes. And that makes what we call a igneous rock. And igneous rock can either form deep down below the surface, in which case we use the word plutonic, or we might use the term intrusive. So that's if it cools and crystallizes deep down below the surface. If it reaches the land surface or close to the land surface, it gets called volcanic or extrusive. So we've got igneous rock now. And this is where it starts to get really interesting. And this is where your landscapes start to come into play. All sorts of things can happen. And I usually abbreviate these as U-W-E-T and D. What on earth am I talking about? Okay, so U stands for uplift. So this is where the forces inside Earth, and that's plate tectonics, we'll invest, be investigating that, um, basically start pushing that material upwards. And as that material at the surface is exposed to the elements, it gets weathered. And that's the physical or chemical breakdown of the rock. Then the material gets removed from wherever it starts off, and that is erosion. Then it gets carried away from that starting point, and that is transport by an agent of transport. So what might that be? It could be ice, it could be liquid water, and for small enough particles, it might be wind. And then those transporting agents deposit material, and that's the D, deposit. And the material that is deposited makes up other box here, and that is sediment. So that's loose particles of a whole variety of sizes. So we've now got three um, main 
uh, groupings of earth materials. What will happen after some time that sediment gradually gets um, overlain or there are more layers deposited on top of it and it gets buried and it may get heated up for a variety of other reasons. And that is what happens to the sediment is it is buried and it becomes lithified. And that's just the fancy word for becoming hard. So in here, we now have a sedimentary rock. So we've got the hardened version of sediment. Now, if that sedimentary rock gets squished and heated, in other words, it gets metamorphosed, or it undergoes metamorphosis, that will make metamorphic rock. So during the making of metamorphic rock, all the components of the pre-existing rock, um, they usually change their nature somehow, but it all happens while they are still hard. Nothing has melted. And that's kind of hard to get one's brain around. But then um, if the temperature and pressure increases enough, there will be melting and you will get a magma again. Now, there are several shortcuts in this system. Take a look at it for a moment. Where might some of those shortcuts be? Well, you can have sedimentary rock that is exposed at the surface as a consequence of uplift, weathering, erosion, transport, and deposition, U, W, E, T, and D. And you will have material that gets stuck in a loop here for millions of years. You can also have metamorphic rock that supplies material to sediment, U, W, E, T, and D. There are also igneous rocks that can get metamorphosed. And a reminder, metamorphism involves an increase in pressure and an increase in temperature. So that's heating and squishing. Now, so we've got a diagram here that captures this rock cycle. And what's really important to remember, I'll do this in a different color to help emphasize it. There is no fixed path and no fixed amount of time. So this is how the different rock types are connected to each other in a very big picture way. So when you look at a landscape and you see rocks and you see sediment, um, think about the rock cycle. Also, make sure you can draw this diagram yourself um, often it gets presented in slightly different orientations with magma maybe over at the left or the right, um, but the connections are all the same. One word of um, warning, if you like, you cannot make magma from sediment. You cannot make metamorphic rock from sediment. And that's because in order to get melted, for example, that sediment first has to become a sedimentary rock and then a metamorphic rock. And only then might, if the circumstances are right, get melted. Okay, so thank you very much.
stop that. And what I want you to do now is watch the plate tectonics video, and then you can do the D D2L quiz on the rock cycle and plate tectonics. Thank you.